Hello, fencing fanatics. Coach Jason here with another installment of our short book review series. Today we've got a basic foil companion, ABC. I kind of like that. Um, this is not, despite the, the title, it makes it sound like it's a really simple book. Uh, it, it, and it is a simple read. It is a very good read. It's not meant for little kids. The ABC kind of you know, might throw you off. Uh, but it, the kids can read this. It, it's not a complicated read. Um, and right off the bat, the, the author of the book, who's Paul, si Paul Seitz, published in 2010, the author of the book says um, every, every beginning foil fencer should read this. So I like that he's honest with it. So like he's not, not pretentious, kind of like the last book was. Um, and the, the, about the author, that's it right there on the back of the jacket. I, I like that. Uh, just real quick, Paul, that's, this is the author right here. Uh, holds a level three certification and all three weapons from the USFA Coaches College as well as a level three armor uh, certification from the Armors College. Um, he's got the same certification Coach Jennifer and I do. He went a little bit further before the program unfortunately was shut down several years ago. It was an awesome program run by Coach Alex Baganay with Duke University, uh, Michael Marks, who's a multi-time multi Olympian fencer um, and he I, th I think he was the owner of Boston Fitz Academy he's moved on since then but uh, I, Michael's an awesome man too but a really good program and so we both got certified full and at bay and coach Jennifer of course also holds a level three armor certification uh, just, there are a lot of notes I took from this book uh, that's how much information is in it so I'm gonna have to break this up in a, a few pieces I can't memorize all of it in one shot um, but the preface and dedication are awesome it starts off by saying most fencing manuals are boring. <laughs> you know, I love that. Again, he's just straight up and honest. Like, you know, I'm going to try and do this a different way to keep you reading, to keep you interested. But let's face it, most of these things are kind of on the dull side, right? Um, the intro is also only a couple pages. And instead of him going into history and so forth, he actually just told us a, a simple story about a 75-year-old man who dropped by his school. Or actually, I think it was a booth. He had a booth at some kind of demonstration. And the, the, the man said he took one fencing lesson in the Boy Scouts all those years ago and it always stuck with him and you know he always wished he had taken up the sport even though he didn't so I thought that was a just a nice intro you know rather than going into history and name drops and here's here's who created the sport of fencing like a lot of the others the books do he just took a different route you know not that any of that stuff is important I've said before that's one reason to read about fencing is to get history and different viewpoints because not everybody agrees on everything so it's kind of nice to have you know what was her Nancy Curry said the Germans created the sport of fencing. That's the first time I've ever heard of that. You know, I, I, it kind of evolved from all the different schools of fencing, French, uh, French, Spanish, uh, well, Italian. Uh, that was what the, I had learned. So it was kind of interesting. That. So, you know, getting that perspective on, on uh, or different views on history is important. But he kind of just pushes that aside because he, the point of this book is to really just to get a new student going. That's what it's for. You know, let's not bog them down with a bunch of stuff that they don't need at the beginning of that. They can research that later. Let's just get them going. And I like that. He says in here, um, don't practice at home until your coach says you can. That is something I disagree with. You know, day one, when somebody comes up here at the end of class, we say, go home and practice for 10 minutes minimum. If you want to do longer, sure, but 10 minutes minimum. Reinforce what you've learned. You're not going to get it right. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. That's better than starting completely over again or almost completely over in the next class. So as an example, if we teach someone on their first class the basics of doing a, a simple straight attack, if they go home and practice that a few times, even though they don't have anything to hit, maybe they don't have a foil, they practice the footwork, they practice the lunge, the next class, it's not like they haven't done anything. Like we've got to fix everything. At least they can do the lunge. At least they can get their hand out in front of them, you know. Uh, and, then, and if we've gotten angulation, maybe they'll remember that. So we're building, constantly building. And the student is reinforcing themselves. Yes, it's, they are going to have bad habits there, but we're talking technical bad habits that are easier to fix. You know, um, strategical bad habits, are, that's a lot harder to fix. You know, like siblings, siblings going home and trying to fence each other. <laughs> that's not such a great idea because they're just going to end up playing more than anything else and um, uh, reinforcing bad habits of how to apply the tech stuff, right? Um, he also says in here, at the end of each session, take notes. Boy, oh boy, do we tell our fencers that. Boy, oh boy, do none of them do it. <laughs> Everybody learns differently. I am definitely a note taker. Um, when I'm doing something or, or learning something that's valuable to me, I do want to write down things. Uh, so I don't forget them. 
you know, especially from an instructor who's had a lot of experience, you know, they, uh, one thing I've noticed, and I, I do this myself, I do it during these, do during these reviews, is I'll be going in one direction and then something sparks and then I change direction. That is so valuable to me from, from mentors and from teachers, you know, they're, they're trying to teach something, but then they remember something else that they want to add in. So they get sidetracked. It's not completely sidetracked what they're talking about, but it's like, oh yeah, and this. That's what I write down, you know? It's like, how to do a straight attack? And then, oh yeah, but you know what? I've got to add angulation to this too. Um, those are the type of things that should be written down. And if I don't completely understand it, then I've got it on paper and I come back and I ask questions. I've got notes from when I was 14 years old from you know sports and things like that, um, from martial arts specifically. And again, that's just how I learn. So we, we recommend everyone take notes and ask a lot of questions. That's, that's how you're going to progress in the sport. He uh, says in here, practice when you're bouting. And again, that's, that's a, a strong parallel to here. Uh, when we're fencing, we tell our students, there is no win and lose here. You, know, you shouldn't step on that strip and be afraid that you're going to lose the bout. You step on the strip and say, I need to work on this. I'm going to practice this and this and this. If you're, if you're learning how to do flicks and you keep hitting people flat with the blade, then every now and then throw a flick in there. You know, even if you're going to miss it, if you're going to miss the opponent or they'll, their counter gets to you before your attack lands, whatever, that's not what you should be afraid of. You know, especially with beginning fencers, the, the thing I see the most is they just, they don't, they'll parry but not repose because they don't want to get too close. And, well, if I repose, I've got to get in and maybe they're faster than me. Throw that out of your head is what we tell them. That's, that's not what you should be doing right now. You should parry or repose, period. Hit the target. Right? You should be trying to hit the target. On, off, doesn't matter. At this point, when you parry, repose. So, I agree with that 100%. It, you know, you get on the strip in here, don't, don't worry about winning or losing practicing. And that goes as for our competitors as well. You know, they, especially them, because they need to develop those skills and fence outside of their comfort zone here so that they don't have to do that when they're in competition. That's the worst time to do that. When you're in competition, you should have a lot of different tools on which you can lie. Then if those fail against two area fence, then you need to go outside the box. But you want to develop those develop those skills here so that you can just focus on the bout and, and doing your absolute best and hopefully winning that bout at a competition. So do I recommend this? Absolutely. This book is a fantastic, simple read to get someone going for fencing, but it also has a lot to offer to anyone who wants to mentor. You know, if you've been fencing for a while and you think you want to teach um, uh, or, or even just in class help out with new students, that type of thing, this can help you with that. You know, um, especially since it's, since it's certification is USFA Coaches College, it's, it's what we do here. And uh, so, yeah, it's a fantastic book, simple read, highly recommend it. Uh, if I were going to write a book, it'd be pretty close to this. You know, keep it simple so that everyone can follow it and everyone will get something from it. I'd probably throw more history in it more history and some more strategy, but excellent book. Definitely recommend it. Now, before we close out today, I wanted to bring this one up because we keep this one here at the school for anyone to look at. It doesn't leave the school, but it stays here. Um, Fencing A to Z by Jackson Bevitt. Jackson, if you're out there, we still have it. And we still appreciate it a lot. Jackson uh, fenced with us in elementary school and he has long since graduated high school and uh, is now cruising the world, I'm sure. Uh, finding all sorts of success, but it's it, he did this as an elementary school project or maybe a middle school, maybe elementary school. But it's just, you know, it goes through the alphabet and he, he names something, uh, the jacket for fencing. So it's really simple. We keep this up here for the kids and he did all the artwork himself. Uh, so yeah, uh, the kids that come up here, you're more than welcome to look at this. Please leave it here. Don't take it with you. But uh, we've had it all these years and it's still in good shape. So Jackson, if you're out there, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. I did the whole review and the camera shut off. <laughs> I'd do it again. Oh boy. Okay.